Hi everyone, Jim the Plain Man here and welcome to Plain Time Red Ranger Edition. What I want to do is talk about the Ardu Pilot configuration for a quad plane because this isn't just a plane, it's Ardu plane, it's a quad plane. So what I have is the Mavlink module on the bottom of the plane broadcasts as DroneBridge ESP32. So if I connect to the DroneBridge ESP32 Wi-Fi, then Ardu Pilot, then Q Ground Control on my computer should connect to Quad Plane Hover Flight Mode. There we go. It should connect to the flight controller, which it's doing, and it started downloading parameters which it's doing and it's a bit slow now what is most important about the quad plane and to a certain extent i kind of got distracted by this too is in order to have our new plane work as a quad plane so as a quadcopter where it can a tricopter in this case where it can actually hover Q enable, the parameter called Q enable needs to be set. Let's go and have a look at the parameters and start with Q. So here we have Q enable parameter and the Q enable parameter turns on all the quad plane functionality. And once you turn on Q enable, then you need to set, tell it basically what type of quad plane this is. So in this case, we've set Q frame class equals tri, because it's a tricopter, it's got th three motors. And the Q frame type, in fact, doesn't matter. Um, Q frame class and Q frame type go together. When Q frame class is tri, Q frame type is, is pretty much irrelevant. It doesn't really matter one way or the other. But what is important is after you set that, then you need to reboot the flight controller because what happens with the server outputs for on the flight controller is that once you set the frame class and option potentially the frame type, then Ardu Pilot, when it reboots again, goes and allocates all of the motors to the correct um, outputs and the ailerons and all of those kinds of things. So, so as we have here, we have servo one function is set to aileron. Servo two function is set to elevator. Servo three function is disabled because we're not just using a single throttle. We're actually going to have three separate motors and we'll talk about those in a second. Servo and so what happens next is Servo 4 function will kick in as motor 4. Motor four. This is motor 4. The way the whole quad plane thing works is it starts with um, motor 1, motor 2, and then motor 3, motor 4, assuming you have a quad. You've got a tricopter, it's still motor 1, motor 2, and motor 4 at the back. And they just basically drop motor 3 for some reason. I'm not sure why it's not motor 1, motor 2, and motor 4. Motor 3. Uh, but that's what it is. So what has happened here is that output 5 got automatically allocated to motor 1 and output 6 got automatically allocated to motor 2. And servos, uh, there's also this other thing called motor 7 slash tail tilt servo. Ardu Pilot creates an output and sets it to that and when you're using a tricopter with two tilt rotors at the front, but the rear one not doing a tilt, that doesn't actually happen. And how does it know? How does it know that? And that comes back to another Ardu Pilot um, parameter called Q Tilt Mask. So here we have Q Tilt Enable, and Q Tilt Enable is set to one. That means that we're actually using a tilt roller situation. Remember, um, another, a, a completely different way that a, uh, a quad plane 
can be set up is that the vertically lifting motors could be fixed and then you could have maybe another motor at the front or a motor at the back that are doing the pushing and that they only come on when the plane's flying as a plane. So you don't have to have a tilt. So first we have to enable tilt because we're doing a tilt configuration. And secondly, then what needs to happen is that the tilt mask is set to three and three means motor one and motor two are tilt motors, but motor three and four or any other motor are not tilt motors. So it knows it has two tilt motors and the third one doesn't tilt. So it knows that that other um, motor output isn't one that will be used. Now let's just go back to the functions again, um, because just to mention that I've set um, on channel nine, uh, I've got, or RC op nine option is for VTX power. Um, but, uh, oh, and actually here we go. Most, really most importantly, servo nine and servo 10. So the output nine and 10 on the flight controller are set for the tilt, tilt rotors. So this is where these guys here, these, um, tilt servos here, which are wired up through into here are connected to, um, to output nine and output 10. And you need to set the functions for those to be output from uh, the flight controller. So, uh, that's the, the servo output functions. Now you see what I've done. I've spent a whole bunch of time talking about the quad plane setup and what I have missed and what is critical before trying to fly this plane is to make sure to get the basic configuration of the input channels and the regular control surfaces correct. And in order to do that, what has to happen, and this is you know, it, I'll, I'll give you the screenshot and I'll give you the link to the RD pilot page for quad plane. And it's got right there in red, right at the front of the, on the, on the page, when you're setting up a quad plane, you're setting up a plane and you're setting up a multi-rotor. So you need to do the plane configuration. And in particular, what you need to do is the radio and control service, um, conf uh, calibration, the, um, regular four channel plane setup, right? So, um, so I've got another video about that where I talk about doing that on, um, uh, I think it was on a Bixler and, but it doesn't matter. It's a, it's a plane and you have to do that. And so what you need to do is make sure like with any other plane that when, when you tilt the plane to the right, that the ailerons basically try to tilt you the other way, right? So if I go, if this wing tilts down, the aileron goes down. If this wing tilts up, the aileron goes up. And the same thing happens with the elevator. If I go up, the elevator goes up. If I go down, the elevator goes down. And that was uh, a critical and important step that I almost missed because what happened was um, that it is just as important in getting that configuration correct for controlling the, the yaw and roll uh, and um, pitch of the plane in quad plane mode because if you have this surface calibrated wrong, then the radio control is wrong. And okay, I think it's complaining that I haven't done anything for a while. And it's probably a good idea if I turn that off because it's going to be getting hot. Communication lost. Yeah, it is. Okay. So calibrate following the, the plane calibration is critical. And, um, and so what you'll find is, so in our RC options, um, I think it was RC, uh, So elevator two, so RC two, you can see RC two is reversed. 
and that was because my pitch needed to be re um, reversed. So I've got the pitch, con pitch control set up here, going up and down, and you don't touch, like, and I've said this before on other videos, but I'll say it again here. When you're setting up ArduPilot, don't do anything on the transmitter. Everything happens in the flight controller. And the flight controller needs to know what's going on. So with everything that happens on the transmitter, you're pretty much just going to say, this is pitch, send the pitch. You don't do rates, you don't do expo, you don't reverse anything. That happens on the flight controller. The same thing with roll and pitch and throttle and yaw. And so even though, and this is an interesting point here about this too, even though the T1 Ranger doesn't have a rudder, you still need the transmitter to send a rudder signal or a yaw signal, which is what we're talking about when we're doing quad plane, um, through on channel four. Because even though there is no rudder output from the flight controller, the flight controller needs the input. When you move your what would be normally your rudder or your yaw stick on the transmitter, you need that to go through onto the flight controller so that Ardu pilot knows that you want to yaw the plane. So that's pretty much, I think, everything. Um, there's some other, uh, well, really not that important things. Um, you know, I had to set some Ardu pilot parameters to, um, to set the video transmitter power, uh, and one or two other things, but um, nothing that fundamentally affects the way the plane flies. That's almost everything in terms of um, what, what's required. Again, I'll refer you to the VTOL Hangout group. Uh, I will include the specific Ardu Pilot parameters that I've, uh, that I've mentioned in the video so that um, you know what to set. But although there are an awful lot of parameters, and especially when you turn on Q-Enable, a whole raft of Q parameters turn up when you go and have a look at the parameters in the in our, um, Mission Planner or Q Ground Control. You don't, re you don't need to worry about most of them, just those few key parameters and the basic configuration and calibration of your plane ready to fly. So that's... That's the plane. It's a beautiful little plane, and uh, what will happen next is, well, we shall see how right I am about everything that I've told you. I think I have it right. I've done all the bench testing I can do. This plane is ready to, to take out and, um, and test. Do a flight and see uh, if she flies. So, wish me luck. Tim the plane man, over and out.